Hi, I'm Chris from Key Farm. There is an actual farm, it's not just the YouTube channel. And I got this old H tractor that my granddad gave me that has never run. We went all the way to Indiana to get it and got it back. Hadn't run in a very, very, very long time. Had a cracked engine block, we found out why. So it's just been sitting around. Well, today I'm gonna show you how I made this Predator 212 move this 3,000 pound tractor. So if that interests you, interest, interest you, uh, keep watching. Bye. Hey, Chris from Key Farm. Today we start the tractor project. Okay, this tractor, my grandfather gave it to me. It was in a barn in Indiana for many, many years. And before that, it was in a field in Indiana. And it hasn't run in as long as he owned it or I've owned it. My buddy Thomas went with me to Indiana, and, and uh, well, I guess I went with him. We took his truck, and uh, we brought back this and the camper, and I fixed up the camper, and it's gone now. So now we have a Farmall H project. And before you comment, hey, you should have just fixed the engine that was in it. Uh, the block was cracked, and um, it's just been sitting out here for years because I bought a Super C. But first things first, we got to get it put back together. Now the Farmall H is not like the C. The C, the engine holds it together. But the H is a little bit bigger and has these channel iron frame rails. So of course, whenever I need something heavy picked up, I call. There he is, ladies and gentlemen, Hank the Tank. If you need something picked up heavy, you call your friend that has tank in the name. All right, so. Um, I haven't told you what we're doing to this yet, but first things first, we've got to get it put back together. All right, so we just put a couple of bolts in this side, a couple of bolts in the other side. Hank's got it like a wheelbarrow, and we're fixing to see if we can set it over there. Alright, so we need the guy that's holding the camera, but anyway, we're gonna let me see that. We're gonna back that part up right there to those holes and get some bolts in it. Wish us luck. Alright. Got just a few bolts in there. Got those tightened up. The ones on the bottom are most important. Some of them are not the right size, but I can work all that out later and pull them out one at a time and, and do it right the next time. Um, steering shaft will go back in. The radiator, taking the radiator off, don't need it. I'm going to take the gas tank off and just run off the uh, new motors gas tank, but I'm going to save the gas tank, make it nice and put it back on and it, it will be the gas tank eventually. But anyway, that's... Uh, what we got going so far. I'm calling this the uh, Predator 212 tractor. Needs a new name, the Farm Predator. I don't know. It's an old farm all. This tractor is 79 years old. I think we'll just take a moment and look around and see what I did and why I did it. All right, let's start off in here. So right here is the original splines on the transmission shaft. I got on eBay and found a clutch disc out of an old Farmall H and I bought this coupler. So this coupler hooks to all my new stuff, okay? But there wasn't any way to hook to that. I could have welded this to the nose, but if you watched my golf cart video, you know that I don't like to do that. I like to be able to take my stuff apart and work on it. So I don't like anything welded on where you gotta grind it off. So I gave this and my clutch disc to a buddy of mine at work that is really good at fabricating metal. Appreciate it, tank top. And he made this whole piece right here. And I haven't spun it fast yet, but it appears that it's going to work excellent. Okay, I ordered 
to go along with this, I ordered this one inch keyed shaft. It's 10 inches long. Two pillow block bearings. See one on the front, one on the back. So I can put as much to this as I need to. All right, this, okay, let's start here. This is an 84 tooth 40 sprocket. And it came with a one inch bore. So what I did is I took a dummy rod and put through this X hub, X series hub, through that to align everything and then welded this sprocket to this hub. Normally an X series hub, the sprocket goes on right here. But since this is not an X series sprocket, I couldn't do that. And then all that is right there is a collar from Tractor Supply. And this is not all locked down, but it spins pretty good. It spins pretty good, pretty true. I had to build these and drill them into the original an H makes a perfect tractor to do this because of these channel iron frame rails. You can build on them however you need to build on them. So I just attached to that bar there, that one there, something to mount the bearings to. And then, you see my engine plate here. I had to raise it up with channel iron because if I'd have just mounted the 212 right here, the sprocket would not have gotten high enough to get over top of this. So I brought it up three inches, and you may have noticed that I built this engine plate strong enough for about anything. That's quarter inch steel. Let's just say it's strong enough for a Predator 670, but to everybody that says, you should have put a 670 on that, you should have done, I got it, I understand. I have a video coming up as to why this tractor doesn't have a Predator 670 or some other kind of engine. It really, it covers covers everything bigger than a 212. And with a 212, I'm calling this the hardest pulling 212 vehicle on planet Earth. Yeah, I've seen all those other 212 vehicles out there. This is a tractor. They are made to pull. And this one is geared super low. Alright, so everything's mounted on 3 8 bolts. Now, let me pause this and I'll show you how the motor's going to sit on it. Which is getting mounted next. Ooh. One word about the motor. Been to tractor supply. Did he just say tractor supply? Uh, tractor supply don't carry those engines, bro. He meant Harbor Freight. Look, he's been out in the sun all day. You just have to overlook him sometimes. No less than four or five times to buy an engine for this project. There's none to be had. So if you went back maybe four or five videos of mine, you seen me repower the, the uh, tiller. Thank you, MTD Tiller, for your sacrifice. I'm, hey, I'm going to get you a new motor. It's going to be fine. So anyway, had to borrow the tiller motor for the tractor project because, uh, let's just face it, I'm pretty excited about the tractor project. Alright, so all of this is hard mounted. This is hard mounted. Everything's bolted down. Everything's tight. Um, all that has to be tightened up down here is all these different set screws and everything. And then, you see I got my shorty pencil there. I'm about, by the way, what do y'all, when you put a clutch... On a Predator, and you got that little, yeah, it's a little bit less than a quarter inch gap. What kind of spacer do y'all use there? I got a big spacer, but I'm going to have to cut it. Unless, well, yeah, I'm going to have to cut it because this is happening today. Y'all won't have time to comment. Anyway, I got my 40 chain here, left over from the golf cart project. By the way, if you haven't seen the golf cart project, it's kind of the same setup, but in a golf cart. And it made for a pretty fantastic golf cart. All right. So, got our 40 chain there. I got links to make it the right length. I'm about to take my shorty pencil here and mark all my holes and get everything as true and square as possible. And I'm, I'm about to mount this motor. And I'm gonna have to cut that spacer. I'm gonna have to make the chain. 
and then I got two ways I can tighten the motor either I can put stuff under here and just raise the motor up or I can slot the holes and move it from side to side which as this moves to the side it gets further from the shaft and should tighten the chain but that's more cutting and stuff all right anyway we're on one bolt in a day and I'm working on it and I just I ran out of bolts so I just got any 3 8 bolt that would fit in there like this one's even got a round head on it but I need to make a trip to tractor supply and I will remedy all of that all right so I got the engine mounted I used the same bolts that came out of the tiller uh, got the clutch on put me a little spacer back behind I wish the spacer was a little straighter but mm, the clutch hadn't come off yet so we're good I just got the chain on um, it's got a little wave to it so the engine either needs to come side to side or up maybe an eighth of an inch I may just try to slip some washers in and just washer it up some but even like it is check this out now I have had it running so this is not a cold start So it doesn't have a throttle right now. I need to have some sort of a throttle on it so I can uh, drive around the yard. And um, the reason it's got a clutch on it, not a torque converter, is because if you know anything about a tractor, you set a tractor to one RPM and it pretty much just stays there for a while. Uh, the reason you want a torque converter is because on a on a mini bike or a golf cart or a go-kart something like that you're in and out of the throttle so much and your clutch is having to engage and disengage and it's constantly building friction when it slips well the point of this tractor is you just give it all the fuel it'll take the clutch locks up permanently and when it's locked up and not slipping it's not building heat like it is when it's slipping so that's why it's got a clutch on it not a torque converter that and torque converters are out of sight right now i can't find a cheap one and the cheap one on the golf cart works very, very well. So, let's rig up a throttle, get the tripod out, and see what we can make happen. Well, this is where I was working on the tractor. And it got there under its own power. set the tripod up and uh, I just need y'all to remember this was built to be the hardest pulling 212 vehicle didn't nobody ever say nothing about fast because it's not fast but if you had to move a loaded trailer around I mean a tractor is what a tractor is so let me get this set up it's real primitive look I just got it together like uh, the throttle right now is a rope so and I didn't know if the brakes work but they did so, check this out.
there you have it. A probably 3,000 pound, 79 year old machine being powered by a Predator 212. Look, it needs a lot more. We're going to definitely do more videos. We're going to see what it will pull without smoking this cheap clutch. And uh, got to get a real throttle on it. Got a lot more stuff to do. And remember what I said about a bigger motor. There will be a video very, very soon of why it doesn't have a bigger motor. But right now, I'm saying it's the hardest pulling Predator 212 powered vehicle on planet Earth. Hey, I'm Chris from Key Farm. I wish you'd love God, love people. Hit that subscribe button to see what else we do to this machine. And uh, I'll see you next time.